In this video, we're going to walk through the pros and cons of storing uploaded files directly to your Bubble app, because you actually do have a lot of options when it comes to file management. We're going to make sure you understand what those options are so that you implement the solution that makes the most sense for your app. Every Bubble application comes with a certain amount of file storage. So if you're looking to get started right out of the box, taking advantage of the native capabilities with file management here could be a great way to go. So right now we're looking at an editor, a bubble editor here, and specifically at the file manager area of the editor. So this is a dedicated space where you can look at all the files that have been uploaded to the app, whether it was uploaded by your users or by yourself as a system admin. The great thing about taking advantage of Bubble's built-in capabilities is that it's all under one roof. Um, there's a lot of built-in workflow actions and visual elements that you can take advantage of to keep it all in one place. You don't have to worry about integrations or code of any kind. Um, and you know things can work together with the rest of your data structure, which is already going to be custom defined. For example, your privacy rules. You can create privacy rules that help you attach files to a specific record in your database, not just your user account. Um, this gives you a lot of control and flexibility over creating that level of security. So you have a lot of control over you know, who is able to get access and who should be restricted. Um, and this is something that is unique to Bubble, right? The privacy rule uh, layer of security. On top of that, you have some visual elements that are unique to Bubble um, that can have you working with those files uh, a little bit more easily. The first one is your file uploader. Okay, this works with any file format. Uh, you can limit the file size, of course, make it private. That taps into the privacy rules. You can pre-populate it with a file if you'd like. Uh, you also have a picture uploader that is specific to working with images, very similar capabilities. Um, you also have the ability to remove files programmatically uh, you know, through a workflow uh, with, with a simple workflow action here. So for example, this little delete button is going to delete an uploaded file. This is a workflow action that's already a part of the editor. Uh, and all you need to provide is a URL for the file. So your files can be saved uh, to specific records in your database, but they'll always be in your app's overall storage for you to uh, manage as well. So one of the biggest benefits, like I said, to using the Bubble built-in capability is that it's all under one roof. There's a lot of stuff that's already there available for you. No need to add in extra plugins or work with any extra integrations. As far as pricing is concerned, the pricing is pretty competitive as well. Uh, looking over at this pricing table here, um, as things stand right now, you can see, number one, every single app plan comes with a certain amount of storage. Even the free plan, you get half a gigabyte. Um, once you're on the paid plans, you get uh, it jumps up, of course, you get a lot more storage uh, capacity there, but you can also add additional storage if you need for a few extra dollars a month. So, uh, for example, here we're seeing $3 per 100 gigabytes on top of the baseline storage capacity that you're given. Now, if we compare that to one of the popular third-party alternatives, the Amazon S3 uh, storage solution, uh, this works out, so I'm looking at the most basic standard plan. I mean, you do have a lot of options here, but this works out to about $2.30 for every 100 gigabytes, if you want a little bit of a comparison there. So now let's talk about the alternatives. There are many other solutions out there that can be completely dedicated to file storage management. Um, and there are a few different considerations that you'll want uh, to think through in order to help make this decision. Number one is cost. Uh, you know, these outside solutions may offer many different tiers of pricing models that can better suit your own budget and your app's needs. Um, even with Amazon's S3 solution here, we can see lots of different pricing tiers available. Um, they may also be dictated by where you are in the world and where you want these files hosted. Um, that can be important dependent on any you know, industry regulations that you may have to meet. Uh, so that is one consideration there. Another consideration is that these third-party tools may offer um, additional capabilities, such as manipulating your files, converting them to different formats, sharing them in specific ways. Uh, so depending, again, on how much you need to work with the files, viewing them, downloading them, sharing them, these may be helpful for you. So we're going to take a look at just a few different examples of what kinds of tools uh, are out there. These are certainly not the only ones. And also keep in mind that you know there may be plugins available in the Bubble Plugin Marketplace to help you integrate with these third-party systems a little bit faster so that you don't necessarily have to create the entire integration completely from scratch yourself. But if there is a platform that you are interested in using and there's no plugin for it, you want to make sure that they offer an API so that you can integrate with it 
um, using Bubble's API connector. So we've looked at Amazon S3. This is a really popular one. Another one, uh, just as an example for multimedia file storage, one that's focused on videos, uh, is this one right here. And you have uh, different pricing plans, some base plans that you have, you know, a running cost every month, no matter what, but it comes with kind of a pay as you go type of system. So there's a specific rate um, for them. You know, this is all about video. So they actually price things based off of minutes of video. You'll want to look at the documentation to see if there are any more specifics around that. But again, depending on your needs, you may want to go with a different solution that prices things a little bit differently. Now this one is Upload Care, and this supports all sorts of file formats. And the reason that I'm calling this one out is because they have a really polished widget for uploading files. So this is something that you can embed in your application. That way users can uh, find their files from various data sources all in one uh, easy to use widget here. It's a drag and drop type of tool. Uh, so you can have this connect to Dropbox, Google Drive, um, other third-party systems and consolidate into one place and make it really easy for your users to pull those in. This also works just like general file storage. They have their own pricing tiers. They do have an API that you can connect to. Um, and there are upload care plugins available in the plugin marketplace as well. So all of this to say is that this is another type of uh, additional capability that a third-party platform may offer you. So when it comes down to it, the biggest positive using the built-in system with Bubble is that it's all under one roof. You have a lot of native capabilities ready to go right out of the box, uh, particularly the file connections to your data structure um, and being able to create those privacy rules more easily as well. Uh, now, the negatives for using the built-in system you can't really manipulate the files as easily as you can with some third-party tools that are made for that sort of thing. Um, if you're working with multimedia, you may hit your storage capacity limits a lot faster. Uh, you still need to work with plugins in order to play video or play audio. Um, you know, you can always open the file, you can save the file, download the file, but um, depending on your design, you may still need to integrate with some kind of a viewer or a player uh, for those multimedia files. Now, the benefits of working with a third-party system uh, include, you know, more custom manipulations, uh, you know, transformations of those files, conversions, uh, sharing of those files, and maybe some other options around the capacity limits unique to your own file needs and, and file types. Now, the negatives around working with a third party is usually a lot of the same negatives of integrating with anything at all. Uh, you know, you need to work with an API connection. You may have to pay extra to communicate with that service. Um, if there's no plugin available for it, you may be looking at creating that custom API connection yourself using the API connector. So it may be a little bit more of a learning curve to put that together. Um, but it, again, it all comes down to what it is you're building, the nature of your files, the volume of the file sizes, and you know how frequently all of this is happening as well. So weigh those variables and choose the right path that's going to work for you. All right, I hope this was helpful. And if it was, definitely check out the content you see on the screen right now. These videos will help you better build and launch your app and a lot more quickly too.